Hello everyone and welcome back to another video brought to you by SeniorCatWellness.com. As the title suggests, today's topic deals with feral cats and if they are able to make the transition to a domesticated house cat. And if you can meet the challenge of this incredibly demanding task. Logic says that it probably can't be done. Many experts in the field will likely say the same, but it's possible and that's our topic for this video. Before we apply the full court press to this subject matter, let's explore this topic overview. Most veterinarians believe that feral cats cannot be tamed, although animal rescue agents often disagree. If a feral cat is to stand any chance of house training, it must be young. Older feral cats are completely wild. If you attempt domestication, it will be a long and arduous process with no guarantee of success. So, as you can tell, attempting to turn a wild, feral feline into a precious and adoring house cat is likely comparable to climbing Mount Everest in terms of the difficulty that is required. It's a tall one for sure, let there be no mistake. However, the popular expression, adopt, don't shop, does exist for a reason. How big is your heart, and how big of a challenge are you willing to accept in an effort to rescue a feline, a feline likely as wild as they come, and turn it into the family pet. It really, in many ways, all comes down to you, your patience, your time, and your desire to climb that metaphorical mountain. While you can care for a feral cat without actually taking one in, sometimes just getting physically close to a feral can be difficult. While the trap, neuter, and return to the wild policy is always on the table, just attempting to accomplish that alone can be a task all of its own. So, can a feral cat become a house cat? Let's take a closer look. Before we take a deep dive, let's brush up on some key definitions. What is a feral cat exactly? A feral feline is one that lives without human company and was born into this state of living. It is estimated that roughly 100 million cats just in the United States alone are of the feral variety. Living in colonies, cats of this nature often roam the land and reproduce regularly. True feral cats are wild and potentially very dangerous, not only from an aggressive standpoint due to having no true association with humans, but also from a disease standpoint. This isn't Garfield, that's for sure. As we noted in our introduction, it can be tempting to engage with a feral cat, especially if you're just a kind-hearted cat lover. However, just the act of approaching a feral can go south and sour in a great big hurry. We'll address the reasons for this possibility in our next subsection. While this could be on some level an act of preaching to the choir, it should be stated that not every cat that seemingly roams free is a feral feline. In fact, most are not, by a wide margin at that. Cats that once had a home, yet no longer do, for whatever the reason, are not feral. They are stray. Cats of this nature are typically the cats you'll find in a neighborhood just roaming around at high noon. They're approachable, usually friendly. They've either drifted away from home and are missing, or they've simply been released from their home for whatever the reason. It could be something as simple as their owner moved to a new location and just left them behind. Regardless, stray cats are homeless cats. They're used to human companionship and potentially have spent years in a loving home prior to their current situation. In reality, the only thing that stray cats and feral cats have in common is the lack of a home. However, the roads taken to get to the present moment likely couldn't be more different. And that takes us to the title of this subsection, The Differences Between Feral and Stray Cats. Here's a bit of a breakdown. Feral cats will avoid all human contact, whereas stray cats will typically approach humans with relative ease and beg for food and or petting. Feral cats, as we noted, move around in groups and colonies. To the contrary, stray cats live, sleep, and wander alone. Feral cats often attempt to conceal their movements, silent and sneaky, almost like a burglar on the prowl. Strays will normally walk tall. They're not trying to hide too much. They'll just stand in the middle of the road in your neighborhood. They're not afraid if you see them. The feral is the opposite, as survival is the ultimate name of the game. The feral cat doesn't, well, just doesn't say too much, unless angered or scared. The stray, however, just like your family house cat, meowing and purring, especially during human interaction. And this next difference, well, it's a bit tricky and potentially confusing. Could leave you scratching your head a bit. 
and it is also one that could be flip-flopped depending on the cat and the environment. The feral cat is well-groomed, while the stray is dirty and disheveled. Say what? You want to repeat that? Well, it can be easy to assume the opposite. This difference can hold true, at least for a while. Here's the thought. The idea, the basic backbone for this thinking is the following. The feral cat knows how to groom and how to live off the land because felines of this type, well, they know no other existence. However, a stray cat likely comes from a life of, let's just say it, privilege. Good petting, good brushing, monthly flea treatments, etc. While every cat grooms, the stray cat probably once had a life of grooming assistance. With that now taken away, combined with life in the elements, and with no human help in this regard, it could take a toll on fur appearance. Moving on to our next difference, feral cats are primarily nocturnal. They put on the night moves in an effort to steer clear of humans and other potential threats. On the contrary, the stray cat will roam free during the day and primarily hide away at night. And finally, feral cats want nothing to do with cat food or cat toys, primarily because they have no clue what either one really is. Presenting cat food to a feral cat would be like handing George Washington a smartphone. Yeah, no clue. Feral cats live off the land and they eat off the land, whatever they can find. Dead critters in the woods, old discarded food from the garbage can. The idea of quote-unquote cat food is just foreign. On the other hand, stray cats know all about cat food and probably miss it. The more food and play toys, the better. On a side note, while some stray cats will have a clipped ear, it's more common to see this in feral felines. The visual clipping is an indicator that they have been previously captured, neutered, and then returned to the wild. This is done in an attempt to reduce the population. It is estimated that roughly 75% of all feral kittens live less than six months. While this statistic is incredibly sad, it just goes to show you that being born on the land without human association and assistance can lead to almost certain death. Accidents and illnesses, as you would likely assume, are the primary causes of demise. Well, we are here, the moment of truth. Is it possible to tame a feral cat? You're going to get mixed reactions for sure. Some vets would likely say no, while some in the animal rescue field could give you a yes. In the backdrop of this entire video, the message has been consistent. It's a tall task for the many reasons we've already mentioned. However, odds of a positive outcome increase if you encounter a feral when it is extremely young, under one year, perhaps even less than six months. Simply stated, the cat that just hasn't been alive long enough to fully adopt to the true feral life. It doesn't know to be afraid and standoffish against humans compared to, say, older ferals. There just hasn't been enough time. Taking in a young feral can give you somewhat of an in when it comes to coming out victorious and turning a feral into a house cat. However, there are several key steps that should be followed. The first step in the process involves trapping the cat in a large cage, either through bait or other measures. Never directly approach under any circumstances. Okay, so the cat's in the cage. Now what's next? A trip to the vet, that's absolutely critical. For the most obvious reasons, taking the feral to the vet is critical because living off the land and nothing else is just simply toxic. The cat in question could have any number of diseases and illnesses. A vet can diagnose and treat these issues. Also, check for pregnancy and remedy the cat of fleas, lice, ticks, etc. The next step is to give the feral feline a piece of assigned territory within your home. A cat room, a room free of your personal belongings, just an area to exist and blow off steam. Feral cats aren't used to being in a room, obviously, so this alone, uh, something that would seem simple to other cats, is a whole new world, a whole new experience. Make sure this room has some hiding areas, along with plenty of food and water. While you're not encouraged to stay in the room for long periods of time, Check on the cat every so often. This will get the feline used to being around humans. The cat is a rough one, especially on the personality side. Perhaps entice the cat into the cat carrier while you're in the room. This will keep you from being scratched or bitten if the cat decides to attack. Focus on speaking and the words you use and your voice tone. 
Cats recognize their owners by voice, so this is critical. The next positive step involves building trust through the use of food. This is the true first step in the bonding process. Over time, you can gain your cat's trust through food. And keep in mind, as we noted earlier, most feral cats have no clue what cat food is. They've never seen it, so be prepared for an upset stomach. Once the feral cat begins to eat with your encouragement, introduce a few simple and basic toys. This will help to break that constant survival of the fittest mindset. Here again, just like food, a feral cat won't understand what a toy is, so this will naturally take time. Next up, we have litter training. Because feral cats just go wherever they please, this will also take some time. Are you sensing a theme here? Patience and time. That's what it's all about. Start off with a bit of nature mixed in with the litter. Prepare a tray of litter with a bit of grass or soil. Cater to what the feral cat knows, then slowly build your way up to providing a normal litter box. If all goes well, a feral could be properly litter trained in two to three months. Never rush this process. It must be done at the cat's pace, not yours. Any type of forced action by you could set things back dramatically. And finally, attempted handling. Once everything has been accomplished off your checklist, and hopefully with positive success, you'll arrive at the handling phase, likely the ultimate moment of truth. There is always a danger when attempting to handle a cat that does not wish to be handled. This goes for feral and domestic. However, the concept of a feral being picked up by a human, well, that's probably like us being picked up by an alien. Yeah, rather scary and strange. Before you even make an attempt, get down on your cat's physical level just to monitor the feline. If you hear hissing or see growling, a puffy tail, swiping with the claws, yelling, yowling, you know, the whole nine yards, just back away. There's no point in risking potential injury and giving the cat an incredibly negative experience that will likely halt the domestication process entirely. While this topic, well, it can truly take hours to unpack, the best summary involves patience, understanding, and the knowledge that frustration will likely be a perpetual occurrence. Attempting to transform a feral cat into the family pet is tough, to say the very least. Not everyone is cut out to even attempt it. Some domestic cats can be an extreme challenge. Just the thought of attempting to change the ways of a feral cat likely seems like a nightmare situation for many. It's important to note that even if you do all of these steps we've suggested here today, odds are, unfortunately, still strong that nothing is truly going to work. And this will be due to no failure on your part, as some animals, sort of like people, are just meant to roam free and live life in the fast lane and do it on their terms. And on that note, that will conclude things for the video portion of our material today. However, if you'd like to know more concerning this very interesting and very important topic, please head on over to SeniorCatWellness.com. There you will find an incredibly in-depth article that is currently waiting just for you. Are you watching us off-site? If so, please click the initial link in the description box below. Said link will take you to this valuable piece of information. And until our paths cross again, and I certainly hope they do, we'd like to thank you once again for joining us today. Please have a wonderful day. All the best to you and yours, and we will talk to you later.